Hello, my name is Elena. I'm a student at University of Florida studying sustainability and environmental science. And just like many other young people, I know that my future will be affected by the energy policies implemented today. The real cost of energy include energy security, environmental pollution, and the impact of climate change. My generation will be paying for these things. But there is a renewable energy policy which has powerful economic benefits by providing jobs and energy security through homegrown renewable energy. In Germany, where this policy was first implemented, it is called the feed-in tariff. This policy is also called the Renewable Energy Dividend Policy. In the United States, there is only one place where this policy is in effect, and it is where I live, Gainesville, Florida. I interviewed a number of experts to find out the details on the feed-in tariff, also known as the Renewable Energy Dividend Policy. This is my interview with our hometown hero, Ed Regan, the Assistant General Manager for Gainesville Regional Utilities. He is the one who got the feed-in tariff implemented in Gainesville. The feed-in tariff approach is you, you take a whole different perspective. You're saying, what does the price for the energy have to be from this technology to make it a good investment for whoever's going to build it? Mm -hmm. It's a whole different way of looking at it. You're going to make a good rate of return. The rate of return that we've designed is about a 5% after taxes. Now, that's the first thing. It's a good price. Second thing is we give you a contract. That price is fixed for 20 years. And the, the uh, entity that is building it or paying for that, uh, in this case, uh, Gainesville Region Utilities, we have a very excellent credit rating. And so it's a very secure contract. Our, our program will absorb 4 megawatts a year. And that would, uh, four megawatts will increase a typical household's bill by 74 cents a month. The, the cost of this policy comp compared to our normal cost of doing business is pretty low, pretty low. And it's had tremendous, uh, uh, you know, benefits to our community already. I'm finding that people really think this is a great idea. Part of it is because everybody has the op opportunity to uh, participate. You know, when you have a chance to participate in a program and it's, it could be lucrative for you, and uh, especially in the markets we're seeing today where people's pension funds are going down to tubes, the idea of putting your money into something that's physical, let's face it, these things are very predictable. They know, we know how they work. We know how long they're going to last. Uh, it's a good investment. And throughout Europe, you're seeing pension funds, hedge funds, rural co-ops investing in solar systems. This is a good place to put your money. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it creates jobs and all kinds of opportunities. The American approach to forcing renewa renewable energy, which is to have renewable portfolio standards and quota systems, just doesn't really get the same results as a feed-in tariff approach. Mm -hmm. uh, the National uh, Renewable Energy Laboratory has just released a major policy study concluding that countries that have feed-in tariffs wind up with more renewable energy at a lower cost. In the following interview, Tim Morgan explains how the feed-in tariff made it possible for his company to invest about $20 million just in Gainesville. My name is Tim Morgan, and I'm President and Chief Executive Officer of TM Industries. Our company owns a collection of electrical contracting, mechanical contracting, plumbing, and engineering companies that operate throughout the Florida area. Uh, in Gainesville's case, we have $20 million ready to go the day they did it, of private investment, to actually go out and do installations in the Gainesville market um, we were able, you know, to, um, to employ or to incentivize to employ local companies to do the installations. We could pass a feed-in tariff policy for the state. We would immediately have the opportunity to re-employ all of those employees that we lost two years ago. Now, I can't think of anything that we could do that could provide that much employment that quickly get that much private capital involved. So if you have the implementation of policy, you would see stuff on the ground immediately. I can tell you though that that investment money and our company will go where the feed-in tariff is. I, I would love to see it in Florida. It makes sense in Florida. We've got the perfect application for it in Florida. We don't have the policy for it in Florida, but if the policy becomes in Michigan or Canada, the money that we have to invest in feed-in tariffs that are s supported by the utility will go to where the feed-in tariffs is. If it's not in Florida, it will go somewhere else. Florida Farm Bureau is a big supporter of a statewide renewable energy or feed-in tariff policy. Andrew Walmsley, 
The Assistant Director of Agriculture Policy explains why. With a feed-in tariff, based on the technology, that price is fixed per kilowatt, where that investment makes sense, where the farmer's going to make a little bit of money on it, or that homeowner that decides to put solar on will make a little bit of money on it. The amount paid per kilowatt will go time go down over time. So it's mm-hmm. that that idea of, of making the investment up front. The, the people that get in early uh, will benefit the most. It'll also call uh, cause the manufacturers of the technology to do it more affordably, and in the end, uh, help ratepayers out by keeping those costs low, low, especially over time. But where renewable energy really takes off is where you have a feed-in tariff, um, and it's usually at, at the least cost to consumers. Jennifer Morgan has been in the energy business for many years in the hurricane-prone South Florida, installing diesel generators for backup power. The lagging economy has forced her to lay off employees, but the statewide renewable energy dividend policy would allow her to rehire workers for the new branch of her electric company, Solar Electric Power. Well, if there were renewable energy dividends and a person called into our company, we could send them to the utility company. They could get the contract with the utility company and having that contract in hand, they could then go to their banker and their banker then would be assured that this is something that they, one, they're going to get their money back. They will get paid back on this and it's a very secure investment for the bank. So I, so then now again, we've got the people getting the money back from their own energy production. We've got a banker now who's now making loans again, who's producing, you know, now uh, just some more work in the community. We have now that they've got the contract, they go to us and we have our men back and we have our, our company now again back in business and uh, back to work. I like the idea that the people get to participate. Instead of just having your power bill go up every month because the utilities are building new facilities, you know, you're, you're now a part of it and you're getting some of that back. You're getting some of that um, profit back into your own hands. Don Davis, the president of Capital City Bank in Gainesville, Florida, explains why bankers feel good about loaning money for expensive solar power projects under the feed-in tariff or the renewable energy dividend policies. So Don, would you um, tell me, are the banks more likely to finance if my project involves the feed-in tariff? Absolutely. The idea is you can finance the cost over a long time because with the feed-in tariff you have a 20-year contract. That allows you to finance the loan over, say, 10 or 15 years, and then you can spread the cost over that time, Mm -hmm. and you can actually have the solar panels pay for themselves. So in this case, you have a a utility with a bond rating. They're willing to sign a 20-year contract. So now, the primary source of repayment is going to be the 20-year contract that GRU signs saying, we'll pay you so much per month for the electricity you produce. So that's the value of that contract. It's not exactly collateral but it's your income stream. It's your primary source of repayment for those solar panels. A renewable energy dividend, a feed-in tariff, has proven to be the most effective to the ratepayer and the most effective policy at advancing widespread, rapid deployment of renewable energy. And this is a policy that leads us down the road of energy independence, and this is a policy that leads us towards renewable energy, job creation, and economic stimulation. And the future is very, very sunny and very bright.